Hello guys, girls and subscribers, and guess which one of you I like most? The subscribers of course. Welcome to this third episode of KSP to Mars, and at our first daylight launch you can see how far the sun is. Uh, well, I, we should be used to it because it's equally as far as it is from Earth. But those kind of little things make it a whole new game, which I'm enjoying and I hope you are too. Today we are launching the Arcturus 4, after yesterday's, again, wildly successful launch. We got a lot of science and then crashed, causing Jebediah to perish, which was a very sad moment for everyone involved. Today we are trying to do much the same thing. We have a rocket that has a little bit more Delta V. Again, we're still not expecting to get into orbit, but we are expecting to go out into space, get some science and recover that. And to that end, we are now carrying two heat shields. One of the heat shield is here between the upper tank and the rest, and this is the intended recovery vehicle. If that burns through and fails, the capsule has a secondary heat shield that it will use to hopefully save Bill. See? No one ever said that we don't care. So, throttling up for launch, I'm using a center liquid fueled stack with four half powered BACC solid boosters. The new tweakables feature in point 23 allows you to set the thrust on the solid boosters in the VAB. Um, and that can be useful if you want to pack more fuel but not all the thrust or if you want to use upper stages that last longer but thrust for uh, less force that thrust less. So that's useful. I grabbed the KSP Engineer Redux plugin and used that to tweak the thrust to weight ratio at 1.7 something which was fairly easy to do because of the tweakable thrust on the SRB so good times all around. Um, as I'm talking about all this marvelous rocket engineering, my rocket is falling over. The problem so far is that we have only non-gimbaled engines, no steering winglets and only the reaction wheels in the pod. To steer us, we haven't unlocked any inline reaction wheels yet, so despite all the good intentions, today's mission appears to be rapidly going to shit once more. Hopefully the boosters will burn out before we hit the ground, otherwise we are very much doomed. We try and transmit one bit of science, that is probably not going to work out, so... Oh no, Bill, I'm sorry, we're going to have to chance a solid booster separation. Oh no, it, it ran out! Great! <laughs> Deploying the parachute. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, the rest of the rocket is still there! No! He made it. <laughs> That's, that's great. That's great. Congratulations, Bill. There you go. Now we're going to time warp that down and then reattempt that mission, but without all that steering. Just going to fly straight up. And who knows, maybe Bill has an interesting story to tell, write a best selling book, or get as a science point, maybe? Because I'm anxious to get into that interstellar technology tree where we get uranium reactors, self-refueling methane rockets, warp drives and cooling fins. But before we get any of that we do have to get off the planet. So first things first, loading up the Arcturus 4 again and this time we're going this time we're going to fill it with James, not the most courageous Kerbal, but far and with a large margin the most stupid. Actually we have three equally stupid and the close fourth in our space program. Looking at our astronauts, we can pretty much expect what's going to happen in this and the coming episodes. Probably nothing but disaster. But then again, failure is an option. If we learn that the real solar system is just too hard, then we have learned that and we are wiser and more humble. But so far, I'm not ready to give up. I'm going to try and get this guy, James, into space and do science there and then return him safely so hopefully all that will work out here we are heading up much like the first manned missions of the united states in the 50s and 60s the first uh, the first american into space alan shepard i think it was anyway might be making a colossal mistake, but I think it was Alan Shepard that was the first American into space. His mission was much like this one, basically shooting straight up on a Mercury rocket. Was it a Mercury? I think that was a Mercury program. Could be wrong. 
shooting up into space, spending a few minutes in zero gravity, weightlessness and space, and then falling back down, experiencing quite a heavy load of G's on the way back. This was uh, obviously a suborbital flight. Before that, the Russians got their man, Yuri Gagarin, also into space. He was the first man into space of any man and in all the nations and all the worlds. So he was the first man into space and he immediately did a proper orbit. He circled the planet a few times and then re-entered the atmosphere. This did not stop the Americans from billing their man as being the first human on a suborbital flight, which was of course technically true because Yuri Gagarin went immediately orbital. So they spun that achievement and don't get me wrong, it was a monumental achievement, of course, to, to put a man into space. It's very difficult, I can't do it. But they build it as the first human on a suborbital flight, which it was, but then again there had already been a human on an orbital flight, so, which, well, you know, put things in perspective a little bit. I wish I was there. I, I was. Uh, well, I wish I was there in those days of the space race and cars that looked like rockets and everyone was happy with nuclear power. But I digress, and that doesn't really matter. Coming up here now on the first stage separation. So far, James Kerman is doing fine. He's been forbidden to touch any control by mission control, and he is happily obliging and not doing anything. Hmm, this is odd. I thought I had packed four science containers. My plan here was to use two of these science containers for transmitting science and one to bring back because the returning of these science containers is all but assured. It was, I keep saying is all but assured, which means that's very likely, but it's quite unlikely that they get back to the planet. And since point 23 you can observe them once and then they have become useless. So let's do that here. Transmit the very cold goo and it gives us a pop-up that it will render the module inoperable. So great doing that. And as the transmission completes, the people back home get their first science points. Let's pitch over the rocket somewhat so that we get some distance between us and the space center so they don't get pummeled by falling debris. Now because the heat shield is in the middle of this tank and the rest we now have to transfer fuel from this one to the others. Fortunately that's just something we can do. Um, cut the engine while it's transferring or else I'm going nuts. So after this transfers we have another burst of rocket power but before we use that let's have a look at our map. Well, Let the transfer complete first but if we make it to space already, I'm going to keep the fuel to cushion our landing a bit. Let's have a look. Apoapsis is at 120 kilometers. And we could push that a little bit higher. So, I'm going to... Ooh, this looks good! Even though the terrain has gotten kind of ugly with the enlarging and rescaling, it all looks very fuzzy. But that planet size just feels right. This feels like a planet that's worth escaping from it actual achievement to get off of. So, James Kerman, you can be a happy man, we're going to 160 kilometers and we might even land on one of these aisles, but that would probably be a little bit beyond our capacity, to be honest. So, the plan is to do one of these goo canisters here in space, transmit that home, and then keep the other goo canister, yes we managed to transmit all of it, then do this one in space here as well, observe the mystery goo, and then keep that so that if we land, if we land, which is all, but it's not, definitely not assured, if we land then we have something to take home. So the plan now is to, to turn the rocket to the other side, I don't know, oh shit, we don't have electric charge for the reaction wheels. That is a problem. That's definitely a problem. Um, what is going to happen also is James Kerman is going to do quickly an EVA report. I think we already had that, but let's keep that. Keep the data, board. Uh, we have to fire our rockets to get some electric charge for our reaction wheels. 
settle for 15 units of charge so that we can at least turn the rocket around so we can ride our rocket nozzle down. I don't know why, but um, the rocket we flew in the last episode had less delta V than did this one, but this one is traveling a lot slower, but maybe that will even out when we start falling back to the planet, because that is one thing we are for sure going to do, we are going to fall back to the planet. Hopefully we, then, we can then recover a vessel that has survived a suborbital flight, giving us oodles of science, and of course these science containers. We are now approaching that dreadful moment. Let's time accelerate forward until it is that time of the month. Not that time of the month, of course, but that time in the flight. So here we go. I'm aiming the ship directly retrograde so that the engine gets to bear the brunt of the heating as soon as we are getting in that f that shock heating area I'm going to fire the engine to scrub as much speed as we can propulsively and not aerodynamically and hopefully that's going to be enough to save James and of course that precious precious science the temperature is rising, we're at 70 degrees, 80 degrees, 100. I'm going to fire the engine now. And that is going to give us a lot of electric charge, which will allow us to transmit James's EVA report. Let's have a look. The temperature is going very high, and we have the charge to transmit this home quickly. Even if we end up burning. Oh, this is dumb. This is dumb. No, what I did was I transmitted the EVA report that drained the batteries and made us not have power for the reaction wheels. But fortunately, fortunately the... Oh, I'm having trouble talking. Must be the re-entry. Fortunately, the rocket burn scrubbed enough speed so that even without the heat shields we managed to survive. So now I'm going to decouple the rest of the craft. We don't need that. And... Oh, that's good to know. I put on the heat shield the wrong way around. So that when decoupling, that would actually um, just fall off and be useless. Fortunately, we didn't need it. I'm hoping now very much so that we will not get hit by the rest of the rocket, and we did not. So, things are looking great. This is an empty fuel tank. Shouldn't be too heavy to survive a parachute deployment. James is looking happy, but we can't really trust his judgment for anything and hopefully we will survive our splash into the ocean where we can be recovered and be brought home. Wouldn't that be nice? I think it would be nice. I think James thinks it would be nice. And I hope you think it would be nice because then we have a lot of science and we can unlock more things and shoot for orbit on our next launch. Or we can try a targeted ballistic arc and end up somewhere in the desert to do surface science because that's one problem we have with an ocean let excuse me with an ocean landing uh, James can't very well get out and get samples or can he we can try and make him leave the craft and get samples we are going to try to make him get out of the craft and get samples because why not First, let's survive this splashdown, though. The patch notes for the real solar system said something was up with the oceans. I'm not sure exactly what was, but... Oh no! Again, everything broke, and... Oh, the ocean vanishes when you're looking at it. Oh, that was it. Anyway, first things first, I'm going to recover these things piece by piece. Ooh, it doesn't always want to be recovered. If it's still moving, it doesn't want to be recovered. That's strange. Come on. Stop moving. Stop bobbing up and down. Yes, I managed to hit the recover button for one of them. Oh no, this was the vessel. Mm. One experiment recovered. Recovery of a vessel after a suborbital flight. Now we have to find... Damn it, I'm annoyed now. We we recovered the vessel with James in it. 
which of course was great for science and everything, but now the three pods are missing. But look at that. We have them here. Splashed down. Aperture is four. F oh, just shoot me. I could have hit recover from that tracking station, but I didn't. Space center. Four seconds ago, leave anyway, that's fine. I'm going to recover all these bits from the tracking station, also the ones from the previous flights, and see what they did for us. I forgot that was an actual option to recover debris from the tracking station. So let's do that. Arct Arcturus 4 recovered. What do we get? We get the mystery goo observation. Great. What do we get here? Recover this vessel. Nothing. That's probably just launch clamps or something. Ah, oh, mystery goo observation. Great. Zero point one science bonus. That's always good, but at least we have cleaned up our debris, which, well, is never a bad thing to clean up your debris. So let us have a look at our technology tree larger fuel tank and a engine that I have never used. We're not going for that yet. Inline reaction wheels, that's great. Construction stuff, this is amazing. This will give us tricouplers which will allow us to make big rockets, but we don't have the science for that. Radial mount, parachutes and smaller engines and more efficient engines. I'm going to go for this. Not so much because it's amazing, but it's because it's the only thing I can afford, really. So, boom. There we go. And here we are looking at batteries. We desperately need batteries and, of course, the science package. I'm a bit torn now between trying to make a big enough rocket to get into orbit and redoing some suborbital shots but landing on different areas. I'm going to make a hybrid something that I think might get in orbit but I don't have a heat shield that's large enough to survive re-entry. I think, I don't think at any rate. Choices, choices. I can't do a proper re-entry before I have reaction wheels because it won't let me uh, it won't let me keep the orientation otherwise, or I'll have to design something that's smart and that's difficult. Mm, choices, choices. I'm going to try, I'm going to, just going to make the next iteration, make something that almost gets into orbit, gets like halfway around the planet, like an intercontinental ballistic missile, why not? So check that out in the next episode. As always, I was Lorenzo, thank you for watching. If you liked it, click that like button or that subscribe button or just tell your mom about it. Why not? Uh, I'm all talked out for now. So, see you next time. Goodbye.